Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, acrylic, back to acrylic. I'm still struggling with my breathing, but, but I'm much better than I was, so I dare go back to using those petrochemical solvents and mediums which we use in, in uh, oil-based water, um, oils, oil-based oils. Uh, I'm not interested in trying water-soluble oils. They're not oils. The oils are traditional and um, I've heard the different reports of them. They're not as good as the original stuff. I just will have to go back to the acrylics, which is sort of non-toxic, no smell to it, nothing to invade my chest. Getting old, you see, um, and lifestyles catch up on it. Um, so what I was looking at was this one. I wanted to do another version of this meadow scene. <coughs> it's the wetlands, Morton Hall Park, but on my version of it. <coughs> but it hasn't got any focal points. It wasn't intended to have any because it was basically a sky painting and, and those reeds. Um, but it's this that's acrylic. And it's got a, a pond in front, I'll explain, a pond in front of the uh, these lovely reeds here. They're, they're, they're growing quite quickly now. But I'm going to show this, but with a bigger pond reflecting the sky. Now, the lower your horizon, uh, if you were kneeling down and, and photographing and painting, you would see a low horizon reflected, beyond, well, hopefully beyond, beyond the reeds. But if you're standing on, on say, say a platform, and there are a couple of platforms here, one's much higher, one's six foot high, looking down into the pond, you would see more of the sky. It's angles, so you'll see, you see the dark. The, so where you've got light here, that wouldn't reflect if you were high up or your eye line is quite high. What would reflect would be the darker sky at the top, the blue sky at the top. I'm not a great lover of blue skies, but I put blue in under sufferance because I like complicated or complex skies with quite a lot going on if I can manage it. So um, I'm using three colours plus black. I'm not sure whether I use the black, but I've got uh, a, a, a deep yellow, which is Reeves, it's an artist quality. I've got um, some white, I've got cadmium red and uh, ultramarine and black. Those three colours are um, cheap Wilkinson's own store brand stuff, which are, which are good enough for, for this. <coughs> uh, but I, I will try to say off the back, I've squeezed some out. But Now this is interesting, this is my little, little pot into which I put in some PVA glue, diluted. The one I've got is not a particularly very thick PVA glue, like Unibond. It's, it's it dilutes about one part water, one part which in there now, one part uh, glue. It makes this wonderful varnish. It's acrylic, and I I I levered this out of the bottom of my little lid there. Look, that's what it dries like. That's acrylic. That's acrylic paint. Oh, that's glue. It's glue without any pigment in, apart from a bit of black that's in the bottom of the dish. But can you see that? Look, it's it's plastic, it's really stretchy, but very very tough. So that's what happens on your on your paper or your uh, canvas or your or your board. The danger is that you get the mix of the PVA uh, medium wrong, and you could find at some stage you could pull the put it off like that as a plastic sheet. <coughs> and I believe some of uh, David Hockney's early works are showing signs of coming away from the canvas. But Jackson Pollock's paintings are having the same problem. Apparently, the, uh, he used household enamel as well. Household paints are not designed to last. That's why they, they stick them on walls and on doors. Uh, right, okay, so let's take a couple of my, my varnish brushes here, which I shall use. And I'm going to put in a background. Uh, but I, I, I want it to look a bit distant, so I'm going to make the background uh, sort of mauvey blue. So a bit of red, a bit of, a bit of blue. Pretty well mixed, more blue than red. And we'll just put it across here. So I want to take the horizon up higher than it was before. When I put in the... Uh, 
put in the um, reeds and things that will, and the sky, it will look a bit different than this. I've primed it with a bit of PVA glue mixed with some water. Sorry, I was concentrating while I was doing that. And it's on a piece of watercolour paper. Try not to make your trees all the same. Okay, that, that'll do, turn that all the way across. We're going to change it anyway. Now, the watercolour is drying so fast as they were last week. What we've got here, it doesn't matter, does it? Acrylic, provided we've got a lot of water, a lot of cloth, keep our brushes nice and clean. We're quite happy that the paint dries quickly because then we can crack on with it. Okay, so let's put in some, some nice mid yellow, touch of red, white. Reeds, the grasses. Now for the, all you UK viewers, did you see last night's country file? on BBC One. It's a little jewel in the crown. It was set mostly in Norfolk on the broads with the crafts, country crafts. And it was absolutely wonderful. An artist's dream. All those gorgeous low horizons, windmills, windmills being restored. There aren't many people that can do that, but then we went to Devon showing one, uh, up, one guy making uh, lobster pots and that sort of thing. We saw a demonstration of somebody do this in Yuki Harbour in Cornwall some years ago. Some craft that was absolutely oh, marvellous. The strength that guy had in his wrists and fingers was unbelievable. <coughs> He's one of, the, one of two or three left that could do that. It's, they're all metal or they're all plastic now, aren't they? Um, but he, he took took a while, but they were absolute masterpieces. Right, we can put a little bit of greenery in, in, in here. Not sure that is right, I'm guessing that's so we'll go back to the red and the blue. It's only going to be an impression. This is my sort of browny colour. You need darks to show up the uh, lights. Well, I'll get the sky in a minute. Oh, lots of colour. It's amazing how far you can go with three colours, three primaries. But it's what primaries you use. I'm using ultramarine, cadmium red, and the Reeves deep yellow, which is a very nice colour. It's not as deep as cadmium yellow deep, although I don't suppose it's a lot of difference. There's the uh, the tube. It's, yeah, that's that's it. There, fine artist quality, lovely stuff. Not cheap though. Right, um, I probably will have to put in a bit of a greeny, sort of uh, bluey horizon, so let's do that. I, I wanted to show up against the, against the uh, against the uh, sky and and the reeds. But I'll put some people, I might even put a small tree in just to go above this as a focal point. And the, 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 the friend who, well, friend, the viewer that complained, I wasn't too happy about it because he then went on to say how, how brilliant all my watercolours are. But you have to please everybody. But I, I love working with the opaque medium. I will do oils, but I'll do oils with um, a knife. I love knife knife painting. That's my favourite way of painting. 
just dipping it in the medium in the in the uh, PVA glue just to get it flowing a bit. You could keep going over the edges, keep getting nice, nice uh, light against dark, but we're building up an impasto as well. Gives you something to to latch onto. The paper's quite smooth. It's got a grain on it, but uh, because I've primed it with PVA glue and burnt sienna acrylic paint. It's quite, sh not shiny, but it's quite smooth. But a couple of coats of, of that, that mix on a dried acrylic painting really looks lovely. So there we go. Right, let's get in a bit of sky. So a bit of yellow, a bit of red, lump of white, more red. See, so this slides about a bit. But only f for the first coat, it will improve. Just get some paint on. Just cover the canvas, kill the canvas. I was looking on Brit British Impressionists, I can't remember the name now, but it's done. A lovely little seascape in acrylic, which is so abstracted, it's beautiful. It's like, a bit like Jackie Gardiner. I hope you've all looked at Jackie, or some of you have. Most, I think, paints in oils, but she paints in everything. Oil, acrylic, whatever works. It's quite successful, I'm sure she's very successful. Up in uh, Arbroath, Scotland. A wonderful, wonderful painter. If I wanted to copy someone, it would be her. But you can't copy, it's not right. I don't copy photographs anymore. I used to. I used to think that was that was art. And the better you could copy, the better you were. But that's not true, is it? It's a, it's a, it's a different sort of art, being able to copy. It's not superior or inferior, it's just different. And it took me a long time to learn that. Art takes many, many forms. Now oh, I've got a bit of bit of bluey grey in there. I'm not aiming for anything yet. I'm just putting the paint on the on the canvas, on the board, on the paper, just to see where we where we go. Also, somebody's mentioning the uh, the British masterpiece. Oh, the, the British. Uh, Painting challenge, challenge on Sunday nights. It's very disappointing. But they're being, they're amateurs, and they're being tested on all sorts of really wonderful things. I, I paint here in my little, my studio. Which is lovely. Let's put a bit in down here, in the, in the uh, pond area. And while we're at it, just uh, cover it with some of those colours. I'll put dark along there to separate the reed beds. Oh, it's all very boring, isn't it? I can put other colours, the other colours in in a minute. And remember, we are working from three colours. I haven't used the back yet. I'm not sure if I want this. Let's just bring that over there. Just to lose it a bit. And we can add little bits of colour. Okay, let's go back to the sky. I think I might change my brush. Give it a good wash. I like these. I bought them about three or four years ago. Three years ago, still going strong. Nails hammered through one of them. The handle comes out of it, it's feral. Oh, let's use this nice, nice big number twelve. Right, bit of a low, a bit of a pale horizon. I think red, plenty of white. The red is very strong for student quality. 
but it's very white. Got plenty of colour in it. But the painting I saw, the the, uh, the like the Cornish one, it was on the British Impressionist Facebook page. Good, some good work on there. Some professionals, well, there's a mixed bunch. Michael Richardson from there, the Whopping Art Group. There's bristles in this one are stiffer than the varnish brushes. Oh, let's get that down there. It's very, very that we don't want any, anything the same on that horizon. We've got, you've got to make it different. You don't want symmetry. No, let's get a bit of a bit of blue and red on it and a bit of a shadow, cloud shadow. Take your clouds off of the painting because it, otherwise it looks as if you're fitting it in. There's a space there, or I'll put a fill that in. Don't do that. Try and resist that. Tempting, I know, but we've all done it. And if I want to make my clouds move, I will. Oh, we'll have a bit of darker stuff up the top, I think. So the dark will make the light look lighter. The medium. Now I'm a darker. Something's happening there. Clean the brush. Whatever you do, don't let the acrylic dry on the brush. And shake your brush, or make sure there's no water in the in the ferrule because it will start running down the, the bristles. This one's been stuck on a few times. Okay, so let's get back to those. Lovely. Ah, got a bit more red in there. Well, I'm all red. Ah, you crap. Do you ever get that? Hmm. No matter if it doesn't look realistic, I know that I will see a skylight like mine eventually. And red's quite st very strong. And I like it. So it's of an afternoon sort of glow. Hey! Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no, I mean my cramp. Just break up that outline there. Or if you've got if you've got any like planes, plain spots like that with nothing going on, just bunk something in. Doesn't have to be right, so it's just a look right. I'm going to put my greys back now.
So if the sun's above, or breaking through anyway. Let your clouds be of silver and not of lead. Alright, so let's take that down there. We'll put some stuff back there in there. Just lose those clouds. I've got a drawer full of photographs that I've taken with a view to future paintings. I've done a lot of them as well. But do bear in mind that the art is not just about how good you copy something. It has its place. Oh no, I don't get a bit of light across here now. I know I've done this loads of times, but they all end up different. Oh, just take some of those tips, catching the light. I'm going to go uphill. A touch of white, very light, yellowy white there. Just a few. Right, I'm going to get a different brush now. Uh, and I'm going to put in some green, blue. Some more dark over there. Second, I just mixed a bit of white in with the blue and yellow, and I've got a lovely light green. But I, I don't want a light green there. I want it dark. It's a bit dark. So a dark, darkest green. To contrast with the light. Especially where it hits those, the, the, the reeds, the tips of the reeds. So it looks like the darkest I'm going to get is the mix between the blue and the red. Which is fine because we can go over with some green. A few spots of red don't always go down, down well. So they're all undulating, ups and downs. I suppose we could even put a bit of dark blue in there. Behind that, so it's a bit of blue, touch of red. No, a bit too, too dark. Bit of light back in the uh, trees, the skies of houses. Not more the houses, but I, I, I'm surrounded by them, like millions of us. And we'll have to invent my landscapes, my beautiful vistas. Right, let's 
go back into uh, the reed beds now. So I'm using a blue and red mix to denote the shadows in the reeds. And I'll have some of it reflecting in, in the pool. Are you with me still? You can always fast forward, as you know, through, through the boring bits. There's bits of silence. Mix a bit of that medium with it. Let's have it flow a bit. So it's a flow, and how I'm saving you money here. If you're an acrylic painter, right, let's get some more. Add a little bit of yellow with that, I think. Okay, I'll get some colour in. seen any frog spawn in the pond yet. Need to put out some more paint I think. Can you... <coughs> I think I'm painting this just a little bit thin. These 200 mil tubes, two pounds, Wilkinson's, uh, or equivalent. Don't be put off by it. The only colour I wouldn't buy is the white. <coughs> Get the best white you can in the largest quantity. You'd use it more. You, the whites that, that are supermarket and type brand just aren't strong enough. They just don't have the power. Okay, so let's warm it up now. Let's... So we're, we're going to be quite low down. Low, yeah, low, because then we can get that reflected in there. It's dark on that a little bit. The medium. The medium dries very, very quickly. Just covering up that initial wash of grey. When you put on the uh, acrylic dilute as a varnish, the whole painting goes milky. Panic, panic, panic. But it all dries beautifully transparent. Okay, give that a wash. A larger brush, I think. <coughs> right, so we're low down. We're reflecting more. Well, we're reflecting. Th this here, plus that sky in the background. No, I don't think we'll see much of the trees, but. I'll change the shape of the pond. I'll have, I won't have it as a plane, the complete plane. Uh, right. Clean. Oh, it didn't stick. I need to stick that one. What I do, I just dip, I just pull, pull the handle off and dip it in the PVA, neat, thick, undiluted glue and it will, it will eventually stick. 
Okay, so uh, we've got this lovely colour there, so we want to put some of that in. Just a yellow, red, but more on the red side. Bert Houghton, he was a member of the Wapping Art Group and the chairman of Castles and Warrington Art Group, <coughs> with whom I was a member for <coughs> 25 years or so. He, he, someone asked him about reflections. What do you actually see when you're reflecting from over a lake, for example, and it's all placid and you've got all the all the detail of the distant hills and the foreground, all reflected in the in the lake. He said, well, throw, throw a stone in it. And quite right, it, it just solved all the problem because it all went riff, ruffled. <coughs> now, for that to look realistic, we've got to put reflections in it. Well, I'm just, just getting the water sort of colour in there before I put in my my reeds and stuff. So now I can drag over those high spots of the paper. I might even put some greeny, I don't know what they call it, cover some of the weed that grows on the surface. Right, put in some of that mauve. But if you low down, you wouldn't see the reflection, would you, of, of what's underneath? <coughs> we we'll keep going with that light. Because I've got to pull that reflection of the of the reed stems down. Right now, we'll, now if we look down now, we'll probably see some of that colour in the in the bottom. So we'll put that in. Just red and blue, and a bit of white. Okay, that's just, no, I can't use that brush any longer. I have to remember to. Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Just clean it out. Clean it out. <coughs> Get my PVA glue. There we are, PVA glue. That was a, uh, I don't know, two and a half litre pot, plastic pot. So, what I do. Put off the dried stuff around the top of the lid. I take the um, the childproof locks off them because after a while they, they don't work and then you can't get them off. You have to prise them off. So I I prised them off and it left me just with a screw cap. So that is fine. I'm quite happy with that. Plop that in. So there we are. I've got a nice, nice bit on there. <coughs> And just, just put some in the bottom of that. And then push it in, hard as it'll go, uh, get a bit of tissue. We'll put the lid back on first. In just in case we have an accident. <coughs> Still suffering from the aftermath of all that petrochemical stuff. And I'll just clean round the, the handle there. <coughs> right, we've now got a brush as good as new. So 
So we're going to start doing some of this uh, darker stuff now. Just get it all the time. I'm going to try to alternate it with the with the um, the light. Oh, excuse me. Right, we've got a nice light back in the foreground. Just keep working at it until you you're satisfied. Well, you'd never be satisfied, but. Uh, Trying to make this slightly different going up, but I'm not very successful yet. What does that look like? Here. It's actually sort of a sienery colour, you know, raw sienna, but I'm not using any of the earth colours. I just wonder if we could try a bit of that pond weed. I didn't know the name of it. No, I can't remember. But off on the bike ride tomorrow morning. Oh, let's put some of this on. Not strong enough. Amazing, this has stayed open as long as it has. A... Just an impression of separate stems. I can't paint them all in, you can try. Millions of them. Oh, that's what they were doing. They were in the fens or in the broads, Norfolk broads. Uh, they were, they could have a, a machine that. It goes through the water, it's, it's only shallow and it, it uh, scythes the, uh, the, the single strands of, of uh, straw into manageable bundles. Fascinating. some wadges of that colour. Uh, 
Well, that wasn't, that wasn't dark in there. Really dark, really red. Oh, ah, more red. Okay, that's coming on. Put a bit more uh, reflection in. Or back, should I say? Well, there's nothing definite on it, is there? It's, it's not, uh, there are no single strokes, but uh, maybe I could do it just to undulate the, uh, the tips. That's just a little bit more. It looks like they've got a lot of colour in there, haven't they? But uh, there isn't. Let a little bit of light back through it. I should have put my yellow and red closer together. <laughs> oh, it's a bit better. Show it a bit. Right, I quite like the background now. Um, I'm going to put one tree in. Just a spring green tree. So I've only got blue and yellow and red. So I'll put a bit of red in. I'll put it here. Spring green, and a bit of white in there. And where's it gone? Okay. Now, small brush, and we'll put a bit of blue, bit of red. Right. Let that go for a minute, but I want to just 
I won't, I want to rough that up a bit. It's just looking too, too even. And I'm going to put in some thicker. Well, I'll just show you in a minute. Okay, so uh, a couple of figures. I've made them slightly grey. See, they'd be too small, wouldn't they? Uh, oh, well, let's. Come on, I'm not really happy with that top of that tree, so let's go back over it. Get nice spring greens as best as I'm able with the two primaries. Oh, that's it, I can hear them. Get a, a bit of a light green. Catching a bit of light there. That's it. I just wanted to lose some of that tree. side of the uh Well, I'll, I'll sign it. I'll, it's, it's not a great one. I, I've, I've probably done it too many times now, but they all turn out different. But, uh, I used to sign my paintings D M Usher, but a friend of mine who's he's dead now, sadly, a neighbour across the way, who was at school with Sir Howard Hodgkin. It was Campbell Art School in the 50s. And he said, it's very amateurish to shine your name with initials. Just put your surname on. Or a pseudonym, of course. OK, well, is there anything good about this one? Uh, well, maybe we'll try a little bit of that. Bit of spring green. Put a bit, a little bit of red here and there. Always oh, goes down well. Just a complimentary to the greens. I don't think I could do much more to this this one. Right. Okay. I've, I think I've got a mount for it. No, blue one. 
one, this one, the blue one. That one, you bloody. Not quite, but. And I'll give you an idea of whether we've got enough light. Brilliant light. Ah, yeah, go down. Yeah. These clips are really tough on the old wrists. It came out of a, uh, of a from a print. Uh, I think we could probably get a little bit lighter on that horizon there. So with just a tiniest bit of colour, I haven't got much left on the palette now. Plenty of white, bit, bit of yellow, bit of... Right, okay. Use those figures. Let's put some different shapes in there. Seagull did. If you hear us mention Seagull and don't know who Seagull is, every Seagull, I think, died 68 or 1972. He was a great Norfolk. Oh, a great painter from Norfolk. And very popular with the royal family. He spent his Christmases at Sandringham, where they go every year. There's a lovely documentary on the uh, royals at Christmas. On the Christmases, they, they buy presents for each other, but they're, they're all jokey. Not expensive, they're all just quirky. That's it, that's a bit better, that's added a bit more life to it. Put a few coming up and a bit higher in the middle distance rather than right on that horizon. Looks as if they're coming up from further down, if you know what I mean. But we don't want to make it too solid. In there. Okay, well, I, I, that's as far as I can take that. I can't do any more with it. Uh, a quick uh, resume. Uh, on primed paper, it's durable. Although the, the, the Fabriano 130 pounds is is only 20% rag. It's a studio paper, but I, I find it great for for wet in wet. Um, a very simple scene, but not as, just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. It is, and using three colours, it's a very challenging way of painting, just three primaries. And, and try to get as much colour out of them as you can. There aren't any neat colours there, they're all mixed from the red, the yellow, and the blue. There's no blue. There's no, just a little bit of red, just to complement the greens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. I've had enough for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.